Okay. Ganun ko to ang pangalan ko, pero ayaw ko gamitin. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, salamat sa mga kaworks ko sa M&H. Uh, um, it's, it's an honor na to finally uh, speak no? uh, dito sa Museum of Natural History. So, um, I will be talking about yung uh, conservation program namin sa Avalon Zoo. It's our Avalon Zoo. It's uh, called the Avalon Wild Care Initiative. But um, before I begin, um, yeah, I'd like to start with this quote. No? Um, the biodiversity of our planet faces growing threats from the illegal trade in wildlife, climate change, and habitat degradation. The one commonality in these threats is that they are related to us as human beings, and therefore, the power and responsibility to change course lies in our hands. Zoos and aquariums can play a key role by encouraging people distant from the wild to become more engaged in conservation actions. Something to ponder on, especially some of mga zoo people. Okay, so as, um, as James mentioned earlier, no? so I work for the Avalon Wildlife Conservation Foundation. It's a non-profit organization that runs both Avalon Zoo in Rodriguez Rizal and our Avalon Zoo in Pasig City. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> so Avalon Zoo is, is, is actually an inter internationally accredited uh, zoological facility. Um, we are an institutional member of the Southeast Asian Zoos Association, uh, or CISA. Um, both Avalon Zoo and Art Avalon Zoo are pioneer members of the uh, Philippine Zoos and Aquariums Association. Uh, it was founded in uh, 2010. Uh, okay. So Avalon Zoo in Rodriguez Rizal is a 7.5 hectare facility. Uh, it's, it's more of a garden. Eh. Uh, yung setup niya, no? Kasi, um, ang original plan doon is actually to be a private sanctuary uh, ng Gao family. Yan ang original plan doon, no? Art Avalon Zoo, meanwhile, is, is, is an uh, indoor interactive zoo. Um, yung building niya is fashion of Noah's Ark. Yan ang inspiration niya. So, both zoos house um, the widest collection, one of the widest collection of wildlife the Southeast Asia. We have more than 600 species of animals in our area. And uh, ang trust ng uh, mga zoological facility na to is biodiversity conservation through education, which led us to our conservation education philosophy. Uh, learning begins with fascination. Fascination creates awareness. Awareness promotes action. And hopefully, your action na yon would make a real difference. On the back. <laughs> okay, so as we all know, the Philippines is one of the mega diverse countries in the world with a remarkable number of species endemic to our islands. However, we are also a biodiversity hotspot. Actually, sometimes we misuse the term biodiversity hotspot to be positive. No? That's actually a negative. Because if we a biodiversity hotspot, we have a number, significant number of species and habitats na uh, threatened na ng um, both natural and human activities. So, um, realizing the need to do significant action and to make a real difference, especially sa Philippine biodiversity conservation efforts, Avalon launched the Wild Care Program. So, Wild Care stands for Wildlife Conservation Action Research Education. Okay. So it's a zoo-based protocol designed specifically to develop and conduct uh, biodiversity conservation-oriented wildlife research and education programs. No? With special focus, of course, uh, sa Philippines. Uh, but we also have uh, several projects uh, involving um, Southeast Asian species. Okay, ang mission namin is to conduct biodiversity ecological studies sa mga wildlife habitats, especially sa Philippines, to implement uh, in situ ex situ wildlife research projects and conservation breeding programs. And uh, most importantly, to actively and effectively promote biodiversity conservation awareness and action dun sa dalawang zoo. Okay, so we have the Keepers of the Forest program uh, involving yung mga flagship species namin. So we chose these animals to be our flagship uh, species, no? Uh, the Bataan, the Varanus olivaceus, uh, yung Kalaw, 
Bucerra cytochorax, and the two species of Loeum is cloud rats. Now you, may, you might wonder, bakit ito yung napili na? So unlike the iconic Philippine eagle, uh, which would require vast tracts of pristine forest in order for it to survive, um, it's a different story with these animals. It's the forest that needs them. So we all know that the Bataan and the Kalaw are sea dispersers. And yung dalawang species natin ng uh, cloud rats are um, like gardeners ng natin mga forest. No? They prune the trees. So, um, and um, ang isa pang factor kung bakit namin ito pinili is because um, wala masyado nagkatrabaho ang these species. No? Uh, ang mga nagkatrabaho lang dito, mostly hindi naman na degenerate yung information nila into something that the Filipinos would uh, know or be aware of. So we chose them to be our flagship species. Okay. So why do we aim to go out? Ano yung mga objectives namin? Our first objective is of course to para mas makilala namin ang kagubatan ng Pilipinas. To know what's out there. To document and study in biological diversity sa mga wildlife habitats natin. And to understand kung ano yung mga factors and threats influencing this biological diversity. Second objective would be to gather data uh, which we can use to further enhance our ex situ research projects and conservation breeding. Um, secondary na lang yung siguro yung pag-collect ng specimens, both voucher and live. We will only collect, ito sinabi ko, inassure ko ang DNR, we will only collect live specimens if um, if it's for you know, conservation priority or for or for, or for ex situ rescue uh, purposes. Okay. Another objective to is to survey potential uh, viable uh, habitats na pwede natin gawing sanctuary for introduction or translocation programs, especially for priority species. And siguro ang pinaka-importante is to, pros, to propose recommendations sa DNR, sa mga government agencies involved, sa mga local government uh, units, kung paano natin uh, masusustain and uh, ma-utilize ng tama itong mga wildlife habitats. So what have we done so far? Um, we've done several uh, ex situ research projects uh, involving several of our flagship species. Siguro ang most notable, nabibigay ko example ngayon, will be our study uh, involving uh, professors De Chavez and Afuang of UPLB um, on my favorite animal, Baranus olivaceus, otherwise known as the Grace Monitor Lizard. Um, pero mas tama yata na tawagin natin sa sanan ng local name, so, ano butan? What is a butan? So, a butan is a varanid that belongs to the subgenus Filipinosaurus along with the Bitatawa, na noong 2010 lang na-discover, and the Mabitang sa Panay Island. As their um, subgenus name suggests, they're endemic to the Philippines. They're forest dwellers. Uh, they inhabit uh, primary and secondary tropical forest, forest edge habitats, with, often with limestone. No? Um, they're arboreal, rarely found on the ground. They are very cryptic. Mahirap silang hanapin sa wild, actually. Kaya mahirap silang observan din. Um, and perhaps their most significant feature, they feed primarily on fruits. They're frugivorous. They're the only uh, monitor lizards in the world that are known to eat fruits or plant matter for that purpose. Uh, but they also prey upon gastropods and arthropods. No? So, ito yung current uh, range na yun, ng butaan, yung, uh, yung nasa taas, yun yung home range ng Baranas Bitatawa. Uh, Baranas Olivations is found in the southeastern uh, portion of, the, of Luzon Island. No? Um, but there are recent findings na makikita rin siya sa Angga, sa may Bulacan. Um, and as far south as uh, Cavite, no? sa may Mount Palay-Palay, uh, doon, nakita rin nga specimen doon uh, na nagtatrive. And kami, sa may uh, Mount Talban, yeah, several times na may, dala, na, may, na may nagdala sa amin na indigenous people na ng butaan. Na sabi nila, nakikita lang doon sa nearby pamiti ng protected landscape. So 
So this is an example of what the Butaan uh, habitat might look like. Um, and these are examples of what they eat in the wild. No, yung B is um, pinanga insignis. This is a type of uh, forest palm. No, uh, ito ay yung binangka. Yan ay pandanus. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, letter D is yung uh, panarin ovatum or yung pili na tinatawag natin. Uh, and these are hemicostylin snails, which they also eat in the wild. So it's listed as vulnerable in the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species. Um, so what type of research have we done in Avalon Zoo? We mainly focused on um, feeding trials. No? So why did we conduct feeding trials? Uh, for the longest time, um, ever since we had Bhutan in our care, um, admittedly, mali yung pinapakain okay, So um, admittedly, hindi pa namin masyadong alam kung ano yung dapat ipakain sa kanila. Uh, 10 years ago ito, pinag-usapan natin, ano? So, um, akaranas kami ng mga mortalities and uh, hindi consistent yung aming uh, breeding success because, main because dun sa diet na binibigay namin sa kanila. So, uh, we aim to find kung ano, actually, ang nag-prompt lang nitong ano to, nitong study na to is, ano ba yung pwede namin pakain sa kanila yung kapit? Na magka-try sila. So this is an example of yung experimental, eh, sorry, experimental feed, uh, feeding setup na ginawa namin sa Avalon Zoo. So this is off exhibit. Hindi ito kita ng mga tao. No? Uh, ayan, may witness. <laughs> Isa sa mga gumawa. Si Jay, ayan. Okay. So ito yung mga experimental food items that we um, use in the experiment. A and B are type of sperma macarturiae. This is a type of uh, ornamental palm. Um, Letter C is um, fruits of pili. Sarap yan. <laughs> and letter D is Helicostyla portii from uh, Polilio Island. No? And yes, grapes yung pinakain yung putahan. Okay. So, uh, we first uh, tried the uh, Tychosperma macarturiae dun sa aming um, captive bread putahan. Uh, itong nakikita ninyo is the first um, XC to hatch and rear uh, butaan. Okay, the first ever. Pangalan niya si Gracia. So, mature na siya ng time na yan. And um, this is the first time that we uh, we will we gave her food. And tingnan ninyo ako ano yung reaction. Okay. So, nakikita niyo yung heavy tongue flipping? Pinakita pa lang namin yan sa kanya. So, nagulat kami sa reaction niya. And again, take note, she never had food before. And ganun yung reaction niya. Recognize niya agad na food. Okay. At ito yung binigay na namin. Hindi na siya makapaghintay. Hindi na namin ang isabit. Di ba? <laughs> Sinong gaban niya kaya? Look at the heavy tongue flicking pa rin, di ba? Okay. So this is the first ever recorded uh, instance na isang active butaan ay kumain. I mean, nagpakain na kami before, but this is yung first na documented. Okay. So yun. Um, I don't have it on video, but we tried na bigyan sila ng, um, ng fruits na merong hinog, merong hindi. And um, true enough, ang kinakain lang talaga nila yung pulang-pula na. Yung mga ripe na. Masarap siya, you know? Okay. Alright, medyo mahaba itong video na to at medyo nagkakagulo kami doon sa background. No? <laughs> Stop muna natin. We also experimented on pili. No? Um, tinignan namin kung paano niya kakainin. Um, actually, dalawa yung gusto namin malaman dito. No? Um, una, um, paano niya kakainin yung pili. Um, kasi doon sa libro ni Offenberg, ang, ang sabi niya doon, ginagamit ng... Uh, butaan, yung kanyang uh, blunt uh, teeth to crush snails and at the same time large fruits. No? Para malunan niya ng mahigit. 
Um, so, sunayin pa ko na yan kung anong gagawin ng butaan dito. Pangalawa, um, doon naman sa study ni Bennett's observations niya, no? medyo, medyo lang, hindi naman actually yan. Uh, medyo dispute niya si Offenberg kasi yung observation ni Offenberg sa karamuan kasi siya nag-observe. So, naobserbahan niya doon na kumakain daw ang butaan sa ground. Pero observation ni Bennett, uh, exclusively on trees daw kumakain yung mga butaan sa polilyo. So, gusto namin malaman which is which. Diba? And, ito yung naging result. Meron kayong makikilala dito. Si Nico. <laughs> Okay. Yung buta na makikita niyo dyan is a large male which kinondition namin na kumain dun sa, sa, sa plate na yun. Kita niyo yung reaction? It immediately, immediately recognized na kinondition sa plate ay food. Tinanggal ko yung sounds kasi sumisigaw na si Nico dyan. Eh. My academic future is secure. <laughs> Hindi ko naman siya di-describe. Nakapalawin nyo naman eh. Um, tingnan nyo kung paano niya kakainin. Yun ang pinaka-important na. Again, this is the first. Okay. Gano'n lang ako Pero I'd like you to notice kung paano niya pinosisyon yung fruit. No? So yung, yung, yung appointed end nung, uh, nung fruit, pinwesto niya talaga eh para for ease of consumption. Kasi hindi maubos yan. Ano lang eh, masyado lang kami excited, masyado akong maingay, kaya medyo ano yung buta. <laughs> medyo blurry siya. I believe this is hard to observe in the wild. Kaya nga, kriptik sila. Sila madaling mo. Makita. Ngayon ang isang interesting uh, ano nito na ginawa namin is kinabukasan, tinignan namin kung nag-deficate. And to it out, nakita namin yung kanyang pupu. <laughs> Buong buo yung si. Buong buo yung si. So that um, strengthens the uh, the fact that uh, it's a seed dispersal. Ay na bulabu ng yata siya dito. Pero babalikan yun. Actually, mahaba tong video na paubusin yun lahat. Okay, we also observe kung paano niya kakainin ang snail. Uh, again, we experimented on um, ex situ hatch and reared individuals. Um, etong uh, butaan na to, this is the first time that we gave it um, snail. No? So, tinignan namin kung ano magiging reaction. Actually, this is an um, experiment ito ni ano eh, ni uh, wala, wala si Raya. Hindi ko alam kung napakita na niya ito sa inga, no? but um, ito yung video that we took of it eating snail. So, yun yung victim snail over there. Awalang <laughs> snail. Diba yun? May GP naman. <laughs> And that is the predator lizard over there. Actually, lima sila sa enclosure. And I'd like you to take note kung yung distance na yun, no? na-detect agad nila. Because there is food dun sa baba. Also aim to be involved, to get involved in the in situ research. Nya, kasi biyak na naman yung kaya natalo mo tanan Indonesia. Okay, so I'd like to end this talk with another quote. The conference held in London in 2003 entitled "Zoos in the 21st Century: Catalysts for Conservation" had one very simple aim. And that's to affirm that the fundamental role and justification of zoos is to act as powerful centers for conservation. The question is, how to realize this potential? So with that, 
Thank you for celebrating after that.